Good morning everyone, welcome to this week's video. Uh, we're back out in the woods this week. We've had a bit of rain, so I'm hoping that finally we can uh, find some fungi. So uh, yeah, let's head to the intro. Right, so yeah, like I said, so we're back out in the woods today. Um, we've had a couple of days of rain. It hasn't been heavy, um, but it's been quite consistent. So I'm hoping that's enough to get the fungi started. We're a bit late this year, actually. I mean, this time last year, I'd already picked absolutely loads of uh, seps. But um, this year has been so dry that we just haven't had any as yet. So I'm hoping that we're gonna be able to find some. So uh, let's see what we can find. signs aren't looking too good. I can't see anything that's popped up as yet. Not even in edibles. But uh, we'll carry on down the path. We'll head up into the into the birch marsh just to the left up here. It's a bit wetter through there. Hopefully uh, there'll be something through there. But we'll carry on. We'll have a look. Right, I think we're going to fail today. I can't see anything at all. But never mind, we'll carry on looking. So we've got a fly agaric that's come up here. Um, looking at this one here, it's sort of it's split around the outsides here. So that's normally a sign that it's um, it's too dry for the uh, for fungi to be growing properly. Um, but seeing one of these is is a good sign because it will show that uh, the edibles uh, have the right conditions to to pop up. But like I say. It's a bit dry, but uh, we'll carry on and have a look. I've got an added trick up my sleeve looking for these. Old Muttley is uh, trying to sniff out seps, and she's uh, she's having a good look around, but. Uh, She's trained to find them and sit when she finds them, but uh, nothing is yet. I think we can safely say this is hashtag failed foraging today. Yeah, it's still a bit too dry. I thought with uh, the weather that we had would have been okay, but we still need a couple more days of rain by the looks of things. Anyway, never mind. Um, it's nice just to be out. It's a lovely day today. Need a few more days of rain by the looks of things. I think it's time for a brew, and uh, we'll have a look at the kit that I use when looking for fungi. So yeah, this forest that I'm in today, this is um, this is mixed mixed woodland. This is this is um, it's mainly birch. Um, there's a few pine and uh, firs left over from this. This used to be a managed woodland, um, but what they've done is they've took out all of the pine and everything like what I'm I'm sitting on here, and uh, they're just letting it grow back to how it was. Further down that side there, that does get a bit more wetter down there. I've had a look around there. There's still nothing around there. Um, and there's a lot of small birch over there as well, but this area here is, is, is quite mixed. Um, the only great thing about this is, is that where they've harvested all of the pine in here, these things here, there's a load of fat wood inside of these, so uh, yeah, it's, it's great to harvest that every now and then. But yeah, so let's have a look at the kit that I use. So it, it's a very basic sort of kit, really, that I, I carry with me when I'm looking for, looking for fungi. Um, I always take a wicker basket with me, 
I see people collect fungi in um, in bags and stuff, but they will sweat inside of a bag. I have got a canvas uh, foraging bag that I clip on my belt, uh, which can be handy if there's just a few things or you're just taking a few. But if you're out looking for you know a good load, I was looking for a load to to dehydrate today um, to to jar up. Um, so that's the, hence the reason why I use. Uh, a wicker basket. If you're using a canvas bag, if you do come across a massive haul, by the time you've shoved them all in there, they're all squashed and everything, um, depending on what fungi you're picking as well. Um, so yeah, so I basically take with me a wicker basket, and then in my pocket, I carry a mushroom knife. So this knife here, um, this basically has a curved blade on one side of it here, um, and then on the other side it's got a little brush which is really handy for taking the uh, the dirt, the slugs, whatever's on the on the fungi that you're finding. So I keep that in my pocket, knowing which fungi are edible and not edible, this is something that is taught to you, is shown to you. This is the perfect way to learn about picking fungi, is to be shown which ones are good, which ones are bad. Doing it from a book, doing it off a YouTube video is not 100% sure. It's best to go out with people that know what they're doing, spend a bit of time, um, get the experience with them, and, and it's time and an experience that is going to make you safe for picking the correct fungi. I'm quite lucky because I've been shown um, the types that I pick by uh, my wife. My wife is Polish, um, and it's very, it's just natural in Poland to go out into the woods and pick fungi. In the UK, wild mushrooms are not really you know, a go-to thing. You don't go into the supermarket and see wild mushrooms that have been uh, foraged locally. You don't find people on the sides of the road selling wild mushrooms that they've foraged. Uh, Eastern Europe, Scandinavia, people are grown up with picking wild mushrooms so they know what to pick. They've had that life experience of learning. This is good, this isn't good. Marley is a springador. Um, she's been trained from a pup to search for fungi. She has been trained to look for uh, three types of seps and we're working on another one at the moment. So the way that she's been taught is basically what I've done is I've, I've uh, dehydrated seps that I've found. So if you smell different seps you will notice that they've got subtle um, differences in, in their smell. So what I've done with her is I've dehydrated seps, a mixture of seps, and I've put them into a sock and then we've come out into the woods and then all I've done is just under the leaf litter I've just buried the sock and um, and then sent her out looking for it really and it, it took a while I mean she's four now and she's got the hang of it now it's just trying to teach her just to speak once she finds them because what she'll do is she'll go out into the into the bushes she'll find them she'll sit and then I'm thinking where is she so the next thing is just teaching her really just to, to speak but she's very, very good at it. Very good at it. But anyway, like I said, I'm going to get some water on the go and have something to eat because I am Hank Marvin. So like I say, we've got chicken curry today. So I know I go on about these real termite meals, but the reason that I go on about these is that they're bloody brilliant, these are. They're out of all of the freeze-dried meals that I've tried. There's a post on my blog. Um, I'll stick a link to that in the description below. I've gone out once before in the Lake District and I've took a load of different freeze-dried meals out with me. 
and uh, tried them all, looked at the calorie content, looked at the taste, look at how much they cost and, um, and the real turnout ones just come out the absolute top. And I do go on about them a lot, and yes, I am a brand ambassador for Real Termat, but the only reason I'm a brand ambassador for them is that they're absolutely brilliant. The products that I'm a brand ambassador for, such as Anave Armour Skin, the Daki Waterproof Socks, and of course Real Termat, the only reason I'm a brand ambassador for them is that I believe in what they, what they make and what they do. I came across Real Termat meals when I done the Fjolraven Classic out in Sweden in 2017 and they were part of um, part of the deal when you pay for the to, to join in with the Fjolraven Classic is that they get off my spoon is that they supply the food and I came across those out there and I did have a couple left over and I brought those back home one thing that I will mention with these is they're they're vacuum packed um, uh, freeze-dried meals um, so the trick is is to really give the packet a shake uh, once you open it up because it is all vacuum packed down into the bottom it's just one hard lump inside of it um, if you don't shake it and if you don't stir it you're gonna once you, your eight minutes are up you're gonna get there and you're gonna find bits at the bottom that are all hard and crunchy and, it, and it's not that good so what I always say to people when they're using these meals is once you've stirred it and you think you've got absolutely everything stir it again and then stir it again and make sure you get that fork right down into the corners of the pouch there because I guarantee you there still will be bits that haven't uh, had any contact with water. Once these are rehydrated perfectly they're absolutely superb meals, they really really are. Real Termat have a really really good choice of meals on their, on their website. Um, they now just started a new range, a vegan range as well. So um, last week I took out one of the vegetarian options that they had, the couscous and lentils, and I thought that was wonderful. I'd always shied away from having the non-meat ones, but uh, yeah, the couscous and lentils was really good, so I'm really looking forward to trying these vegan meals. All right, so I'm just going to eat this. Pack up. Actually, I'm going to collect some birch bark while I'm here because I've run out of birch bark. Sorry, I've had to uh, re-record this bit here. I had a bit of an audio failure while I was out in the woods there. But anyway, um, thanks for watching today's video. As always, uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, there's a subscribe button just here. Uh, there's a couple of videos here for you to have a look at. The video at the bottom here is a previous uh, foraging uh, trip that I've done out in the same area as this. Uh, and then hopefully we'll see you out on the next one with a basket full of fungi.